can you tell the difference between these two? I've seen a lot of different crafters make this kind of project, but in today's video, you will learn two different ways that you can create this handwritten recipe tea towel. Hey crafters, and welcome to another video with Amy Makes That here on my YouTube channel. Today's tutorial is a highly requested video from an Instagram reel that I made. These are both from my grandmother, who hasn't been with us for some time now. Making these just made my new home feel like she was a part of it. So I want to show you how you can make these if you do like crafting tips, Cricut projects, and all of that fun stuff. Please subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, and I so greatly appreciate when you guys love my content. All right, let's stop talking and get into today's video. Hello and welcome to my kitchen. So I'm getting my recipe book, super excited to get it. This is my dessert one where I have all of my grandma and mom's recipes from over the years. And today we're looking for the chocolate chip cake recipe and the rice pudding recipe. The chocolate chip cake, I make it every Christmas and it is delicious. So I'll remove it from the binder and take it out of the protective film to take the photo. All right, so I have the first recipe. The second recipe is actually on my phone. I took a picture of it. We're gonna work with it. Now let's go back to the craft office. The first step is to take a photo of the recipe that you have. I place it down on a flat surface and you can see that I have some shadows here with my hand in the phone. So try and remove as many shadows as you can. If you're able to take the photo in natural lighting, that is the best case scenario. I know the iPhones also have that scan feature as well in the notes app that I've used before. So you can try that as well. You can also scan this into a printer if you have a copier. So those are just some of the tips and ways that you can take a photo of your handwritten recipe. Now let's get into the first way that you can remove the background of the photo that you just took. The first way is to do it in Cricut Design Space. So you would click the upload button and upload that image. Then once it's uploaded, I'm going to select simple as the image type because we just want the simplest form of this image, right? We don't want any of those notepad lines. So the simpler, the better. And then from there, you can zoom in and remove the background. So the only issue with this is the fact that the background isn't plain. It, it was a very old piece of paper. And if you were to have to remove all of this, it would take a very long time. So unless you have a very clear background of the recipe, you can remove the background through Cricut Design Space. However, I do not do this option. Or if you can, try and upload it into some kind of background remover site so you can use Canva in this situation as well. But if those methods do not work, this is what I do for the second option and it is to trace it over in Procreate. Now, some of you might be like, Amy, you're tracing over the recipe. It's not gonna be the same as their handwriting. Hold on, don't jump for me yet. The reason why I like tracing so much is because when you remove the background with a website or a kind of software or design, it's going to pick up every jagged corner and piece of the recipe because it's usually written with a ballpoint pen so it's not going to be a clear stroke if that makes sense with the ipad you can customize the stroke of the pen to make sure that it is much easier for the cricut to cut it because it's just cleaner and i took my time when tracing this over so i made sure that it looked exactly like my grandmother's handwriting in order to do this you will open up procreate and then add the photo into procreate if you are unfamiliar with the app procreate i used to make a lot of videos on my youtube channel about procreate Procreate and some tips and tricks for Procreate. So if you wanna watch those videos, I will link them. But you would just click the top toolbar and click insert photo. And then you will add a new layer when you are tracing over because we do not wanna erase that photo layer at all. So then when you add the new layer, you'll be able to trace everything over with the Apple Pencil. I'll demonstrate how I trace it over. So I hide every layer, but the layer we're tracing on. And then I'll click the background color because it actually helps me see. And I'll reduce the opacity of the original photo so it looks a little gray and I can see where I'm tracing and then from there I will go ahead and trace Thank you. 
I'm not going to show the whole thing because that would take up a long time. But after you're done tracing, you will simply select that layer and hide all of the other layers. So hide the background color, hide the photo layer, and then you will export that as a PNG image. And that's how you upload the recipe into Cricut Design Space for it to cut. Okay, so now I'm doing a little bit of finessing here. So this is how I want the recipe to look like. However, if you saw when I was tracing it, the ingredients were all listed on the left-hand side and then the instructions were also right underneath that. This would be perfect if I made the dish towel vertical, but I'm making it horizontal. So in order to get it from this to this, I'm going to slice it up. And this is one of my favorite reasons why I can use the slice tool in Cricut Design Space. I will basically select a shape and then cover the area that I want to be separated and then from there I will slice it so it can be cut up individually. Now I also could have done this previously in Procreate. I just completely forgot and didn't do it. So you can separate it and skip a few steps if you don't want to do this in Cricut Design Space but I was able to do it in here and it worked just fine. So once I have each section sliced up, then I'm going to align everything in the middle and make sure that it fits on the horizontal shape. I of course made a template and measured the dish towel off camera to make sure that it would fit. And then once it's adjusted, you can weld or unite everything. And now we can get into the first method of creating a dish towel with your Cricut. The first method is with heat transfer or iron on vinyl. When you click make it, you will have to mirror your design because of course that is what we do when we work with heat transfer vinyl. And then you can add your vinyl carrier sheet side down onto the mat and let the Cricut cut it. Fair warning, it is going to take a very long time for the Cricut to cut it depending on how detailed your recipe is. So the more detailed and thin it is, the longer it's going to take. I usually like to set up my area while the Cricut is cutting. I am a big fan of multitasking when it comes to crafting. Let me know in the comments if you guys do some other stuff when the Cricut is cutting. Now we'll remove the vinyl from the mat and start weeding. Since the recipe is so intricate, I'm using my Cricut Bright Pad Go. This is basically a light board that helps you see where you need to weed your design better. And it has been a game changer for my crafting. I'm not gonna lie, the weeding was kind of torturous because <laughs> you have to weed every little inside crevice and background piece you can think of. So you will have to require a lot of patience, but this is why I'm showing you a second method that is going to be so much easier and completely eliminate the weeding and cutting process that will be shown in a little bit. After I have removed the background and removed every little piece, when you flip over the design and hold it up so you're not looking at the recipe backwards, sometimes you'll be able to see, oh no, I missed a spot here because your eyes have been looking at the backwards version for so long. So make sure you check it before you heat press it. And here I am just removing all the scraps and extra vinyl off my desk. My desk was such a wreck after this. Next, we will prep our area. I'm going to place my Cricut Easy Press mat down on my desk and then place the linen towel on my desk. This is a very important step that you do not want to skip. Please iron your dish towel before you heat press it because you do not want your dish towel to be wrinkled. And I just ironed this as the heat press is heating up. Then I will place down the recipe onto the linen and measure it with my ruler to make sure that it is even on both sides and on the top and bottom. Then I will place my Teflon sheet over it and heat press. And Softflex HTV heat presses for 285 degrees at 10 seconds, but I like to do 15 seconds just to do a nice little extra five seconds. Now we're going for the second pass. So I removed the Teflon sheet, carefully moved over the recipe. I did not want to burn my hands. And then I'm going for another pass with my heat press. Then we can remove our Teflon sheet and remove the carry sheet for it to be revealed. And oh, it came out beautiful as I thought it would. So this is the first method of using heat transfer vinyl onto a dish towel with your Cricut. 
And now onto our second method, which will cut down literally half of what we just did before. We are going to use a DTF transfer. So we'll take a few steps back to the beginning of when I traced over the recipe. Again, you will make sure that this recipe is saved as a PNG image with no background on it. If you are unfamiliar with what DTF is and the process of that, I do have a video that explains into heavy detail about how to order a DTF transfer, what it is, and how 143 Vinyl has saved my booty when it comes to heat pressing, multi-layered and colored designs. So I had ordered this off of 143 Vinyl and then it comes in the mail wrapped up in a little roll and of course with some candies. I printed out actually two recipes, but I made it horizontal by accident. I did not mean to do this, so I'm going to cut it up. Normally, you wouldn't cut it up and would just cut the little section off. Since I did the rice pudding recipe horizontal, I'm going to make the chocolate chip cake vertical and move around all of these sections and place them on the towel. They do move pretty easily. I would highly suggest using some kind of heat transfer tape. That will also be linked in the video description. This just helps the design not move around. Then you will heat press at 345 degrees for 25 seconds with a medium to firm pressure and without a heat resistant sheet. So in this case, do not use your Teflon sheet. And I also combined both the easy press mats together and made my life so much easier. Then when you're done heat pressing, you will let that cool until it is not hot to the touch. Once some time has passed, your DTF transfer sheet will have cooled and then place the Teflon sheet over the recipe and heat press again for another 10 seconds. Remove the Teflon sheet, remove the carrier sheets and tape, and you are left with a beautiful handwritten recipe dish towel. See how quick that was? I just wish she was here to see her handwriting on a dish towel. Anyway, let's stop babbling and close out today's video. So that is it for today's tutorial on how to make these custom tea towels with your Cricut. Please let me know in the comments which method you prefer and which one you have tried. The tea towels that I used, the vinyl, and the DTF transfers will all be linked in the video description. And if you make your own custom tea towel, please tag me on Instagram. I always love reposting your projects that you've made because of me. Please subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this and I will see you in next week's video. Bye!